we're gonna talk strings with brass. And what I'll do is we will use like the strings as the measurement, and then we're gonna be blending, we're gonna be doubling other instruments with a strings line in different registers. And so we can kind of like set where would be the right balance in different registers. In terms of volume, we will have the strings here. We've got the brass, sounds louder. And then we've got the woodwinds. So if we have everything at forte, this is going to stand out. And we will talk also about voicing because the voicing is gonna affect the balance. We can have one instrument against another depending on the voicing, one group or the other can stand out a little bit more or less. And we'll also talk about register obviously because that is also going to affect balance. Strings sit in the middle in terms of loudness. Now, in terms of timbre, the strings, it's going to be the most homogeneous one. I need to bring this up. Then we've got brass and then we've got a woodwinds. Timbre is one of the main elements that is going to help us when either blending instruments together or separating them. The more heterogeneous texture, the more specific instruments are going to stand out. So when it comes to timbre, timbre is going to help separate those instruments. Let's just write some music, strings. Woodwinds. Flute. Flute is a very agile instrument. It sounds beautiful and adds color. It enhances and reaches the high frequencies. The low register, beautiful, nice sound, but it does not stand out. That means that if we are mixing one flute, middle C, with the strings, we're not gonna really going to hear the flute a little bit. It's gonna add a little bit. And I'm gonna select flute and strings. And so. I'm gonna go with legato. We're not going to bring it up, up here. We have to bring it down a little bit. See how the higher we went, the more we could hear that flute, especially here. So with the flute, without the flute. But now down here, we're not gonna notice a difference. With the flute, a little bit, it colors the sound a little bit, but it's not that as noticeable without the flute. I think it's a tad too loud. I would bring it down a couple dBs and a half. Just be careful with the low register. It sounds beautiful, but it, it will not stand out. Clarinet, be careful, it has three very different registers. Three, and they sound very, very different. Now, the clarinet sounds very nice here. So that should be the lowest note. Now, so this, this is the low register, and it has this darkness, beautiful. And then as we go here, it sounds a little bit more mellow. You should get a huge register. But the higher you go, the thinner it sounds. It's thin, but it doesn't have the projection power. So these are very high notes for the clarinet, and it's hard for them. At this register, I would rather prefer having an E flat clarinet instead. The cool thing about the clarinet is that, opposed as with the flute, the low register has a lot of body and weight. It's not an instrument that's gonna sound super loud, but it has more weight down in the low end. If we go lower in register, we can have the bass clarinet. I think we're gonna need to bring this down a tad. Minus 19. You can hear how tense this note is here with clarinet.
it's hard to play this note in tune and it's a range that it's much easier for an E flat clarinet. But generally it, it has more weight in that low register, we can hear it. Let's just go to this E note. Without the clarinet. With. Let's go a little bit lower. Notice that the change in timbre here. Let's move to the oboe. It's high in register. It's a little bit lower than the flute, but it's still not as low as the clarinet. But if you're using samples, there's a moment where it doesn't go lower, it doesn't go higher. It's not about the lowest, the highest note is the registers. It's like sometimes you're not even gonna be using that low register because it sounds dark and doesn't project. Or you may be actually using that low register because it sounds dark and that's what you want. The oboe sound that we are used to here is in this register. So this, this is the middle C. If we play the oboe here, it's just darker. If we want this type of loudness, down here, we're gonna have to... A real oboe, real orchestra, would have a hard time projecting in their lower register. If we want no projection, but least weight, this register, then we're gonna use an English horn. The highest they've got is the this E flat note. In my opinion, up here it should sound a little bit louder. I'm gonna bring it up a tad. In this register is where the flute is going to stand out. In this register is where the oboe is going to stand out. In this register is where the clarinet is going to stand out. These instruments are difficult to perform, especially when you are starting. The oboe, careful with the low register again. It's dark. And here, no projection power. Very different colors. Let's go with brass real quick. Now let's talk about the typical ones. We're gonna do the trumpets and then horns. Try at close chord. Trumpets, mid-high register, down an octave horns, sometimes trombones. Trumpets, it's kind of like the flute when it comes to projection power. Careful with the register. The low register, no projection power and dark. That means that you can have the oboes and the trumpets in the low register and they are gonna blend very well because of that dark timbre. And in the high register, careful because it's gonna sound very loud and bright. Trumpets ensemble. Ooh. All right, this is high for the trumpets. That doesn't mean that we cannot have the trumpets here. You're gonna see plenty of John Williams, Alan Silvestri examples where we've got trumpets in this register, which is the mid-low register. But the higher you go, the brighter it's gonna sound. <laughs> Type of thing, this is a typical range. Usually for that heroic sound, we're gonna have this close voicing. But as we start hitting this note, this G note, it's nice for the trumpets to have a little bit of support down an octave. Two trumpets is nice because you can have the triadic chord, but four trumpets is even nicer because when you go higher in register, you can have one of them double the lead note down an octave. Like if you're here, you can have this. We 
the higher you go, the louder is going to sound, yes, and the brighter is going to sound, but the thinner is going to sound as well. Trumpets are too loud. Let me having these. Now this is a very high note for a trumpet, but this is how loud it actually would sound. Down here we can hear the trumpet. In terms of how much strings, how much trumpet we're gonna hear, it's kind of the same. And also it's a very different timbre, so it's easy to hear strings and trumpets separately. The trumpets have the violins register kind of thing, so they're gonna go together. And they sit in different spaces in that room. It's very easy to separate those colors, those positions, and also as you get to, even down here, but as you get up here, you clearly start hearing the trumpet. And here the trumpet has a lot of projection power, and as we go here, there's just no control here. And the horns are beautiful. Great register. So we're gonna start again with the big epic 12 horns type of sound. We've got a limited range, the strings go way higher. Obviously, the horn just the, this is the this is the middle C, this is a safe range, and we can go. But this is extremely high. Horns are beautiful and also for doubling down an octave. Like when we are here, we're here, and now we're gonna go here. And I'm gonna go down an octave. When you've got that strings melody and you're like, ah, oh, there's something missing. Just have the horns on an octave and you'll see how it goes. Pro solo horn. That's kind of like, there were some notes, it was a tad too loud, I brought it down towards the middle. I think it should be down like three dBs, it was, a, it was a tad too loud. If I just went in there, the first thing that I would do is I would bring down expression a tad. That's a little bit more like if we've got big strings section against one horn, you'll hear the horn, but not that much. It's not like 12 horns where you're gonna hear horns. <laughs> 